In this video, I'm going to show you how to take normal fitness data and convert it into standardized scores so that you can have better looking charts and graphs. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're back and we are starting off with a data table like you might see if you had just conducted a team testing or if you were collecting data from a monitoring project or something like that. So to orient you to this table, we have the athlete's name down the left hand side, the date of the test that they performed, and then along the top what I've created is just strength test one, strength test two, strength test three, um, power one, two, three, and speed one, two, three. And this is because throughout the video what we are going to be doing is creating um, a composite score where we are making a score out of these three different tests and we will weight them in different ways so that you can see how that actually affects the data. So what we want to do is start to create some scores out of this data and put it all on a similar scale because the problem would be if we tried to graph something like strength one with power one and then speed one and I went to um, basically insert and then a recommended chart, what you can see is I've created this chart and this would be all of our values, but because all of these different um, tests are measured in such different units, you can only really see the strength score here in the blue and then the power score down at the bottom in the orange and then the speed score you can't really see anything. So that makes it really tough if we want to start to graph um, things that maybe are measured in different types of units on the same chart. So what we can do is convert all of these to basically um, a common score so that when we're actually graphing them we can see them all on the same chart. So the first thing that we have to kind of orient ourselves to is if you're familiar with sort of a normal distribution curve, there's a couple things that um, we need to understand. So a normal distribution curve is basically just a curve that gets tall in the middle and then it's short on the outsides. And basically all of our data sits somewhere in between that curve. And we have a measurement of standard deviation and a standard deviation is a unit of measurement away from the mean of the data and within one standard deviation about 68% of our data sits within two standard deviations about 95% of our data sits so between one and two standard deviations we're going to basically get most of our data now the reason that this is important is we can actually create a score which tells us how many standard deviations away from the average our data point is. And what that's called is called a z-score. And basically what that z-score is telling us is the number of standard deviations, either positive or negative, that our data is away from the average value. Okay, so an example of this would be if our average was 50 and our standard deviation was say 10, and our value was 60, then our z-score would be 1 because our, um, our value of 60 is one standard deviation or one unit of 10 away from our mean. So that's kind of how that value works. If this was 40, then our z-score would be minus 1 because now we're um, subtracting one standard deviation away from our uh, mean. So we're gonna actually ca calculate this now. So I'm gonna create a new column in our chart here and call it Z strength one, so that it signifies that we are calculating out a Z score. And it's just gone kind of funky with me on the fill here, so I'll just hit no fill. But the calculation for a Z score is score, put it in brackets, score minus average of the data and then the whole thing over the standard deviation of our data. And that would basically be um, the calculation for a z-score. So with that in mind, let's type out that calculation. So the first thing we're gonna need is equals, and our score for strength one is right here in C2, and we now want to subtract the average. 
So subtract average, open this up and our data. We want all of column for strength one. And I'm gonna put this whole thing in brackets so that it does this calculation first. So we have score minus average, and then divide this by standard deviation. And as I type to start to type this out, STDEV, it's going to um, give me a couple of options. We're gonna choose STDEVP because that assumes that this whole um, data set is the population that we're looking for and it doesn't try to um, kind of normalize that out. So STDEVP, and when I open this up, all it's gonna ask me for is that data again. So I'm gonna select this column one more time and close this off and hit enter. And you can see now that it's giving me all of our standard deviations. So this standard deviation, so strength score one of 400 is 2.45 standard deviations away from the mean versus this one is 0.2 of a standard deviation away from the mean, okay? So that's a way that we can now calculate sort of um, a value where all of the units kind of look the same. And because of the way we've set this up, I actually probably can drag this column over and get Z strength score two and three and just take away this sort of fill. And I should be able to drag this formula over as well and fill it all the way down and fill it all the way down. So now what you'll see is because we've converted these all to a similar unit, if I were to take these three and hit insert recommended chart, I could create that sort of radar plot and it's gonna look pretty good versus if I was to take, I don't know, power two, speed one and strength two and do that same thing and try to insert a radar chart. You can see that the scales get all weird and it doesn't look as good, okay? So we can convert to standard deviations and that'll help basically our charts look a little better. But that being said, I don't know about you, but if I were to show my athletes or my coaches a chart where the values were from zero to basically three, okay? Three would be kind of the maximum value, um, plus or minus three. Um, that's not gonna mean a whole lot to them. Okay, so what I want to do is I actually want to create this to be a value out of 10 or 100. So the first thing we can do is create a score out of 10, and that's called a Sten score. And the formula for that one is the z-score times 2, and then the whole thing plus 5.5. So basically what we're doing is taking the standard deviation and doubling it and then adding five and a half. And that now gives us a value between one and 10. So let's do that with this formula here. Let's take this whole z-score, we'll put it in a big bracket and I'm going to multiply it by two, bracket that off and then I'll add 5.5, hit enter. And you can see now that it starts to give us all of our scores basically out of 10. And this one's a little bit wonky so let's play around with these brackets a little bit. So maybe if I put one more set of brackets in, no, it still gives us the same score. So what it's done is just converted all of these to a score out of 10. And I'll drag this over a couple times and um, put it down. So now these numbers are gonna look a lot better. If I were to make that same graph one more time, um, recommended charts, all charts, and we'll go to our radar. And you can see now this scale looks a little bit better and you can see how the charts changed a little bit and now it's giving us kind of a better score. Okay, so that's a score out of 100. Or if we go back to just the z-score, we can also convert it to something called um, a t-score. Whoops, I think we're just missing one bracket. There we go. We can convert this to something called a t-score and what a t-score does is actually converts the whole thing to a value out of 100. And this formula for a t-score is z-score times 10 plus 50. And now we get a value from 1 to 100. And this should say, sorry, 1 to 10. So let's do that calculation now. So we have our z-score and we'll multiply it by a 10 at the end, 
close off that bracket and then add 50 to it. Hit enter. And now we get actually a score that's out of 100. And I personally tend to like these numbers the best because I think scores from zero to 100 look the best. And when I create that chart again, it's gonna look an awful lot like the one we created when we converted everything to a square out of 10. We've just changed the scaling factor, but you can see the graph looks very similar. And this is often the way that I'll present the data to the athletes that I work with, is just convert things to a T-score out of 100. Now there's a couple other things we might wanna do with our data here. I'm just gonna insert some columns to give us some room. There are some times where we wanna create an overall score. So maybe we want to take strength one, two, and three and create an overall score out of 100 for them. So let's call it strength score. And there's a few ways that we might wanna do this. The first way is we can just take a straight up average of these three scores. And if I take the average, take these three values and hit enter, you can see now we get an average. So for our first one here, it's averaged out 74, 64, and 61 to give us a total score of 67. And this is probably useful if you wanted to just calculate what your athlete's strength score was. Maybe you're taking um, a 1RM squat, a 1RM um, bench press, and maybe number of chin-ups or something like that. And you just wanted to give them an overall score out of 100 of how strong they were. But one of those exercises wasn't more important than the other one. So then the last type of score that we might wanna create after we've created the average score would be a weighted score. And we might use this where we wanted to create a score out of the bench press, the squat, and the um, chin-ups, but we wanted the overall um, proportion that each of those contributed to the score to be different. So maybe we wanted the squat to be 50% of the score, and then the bench press and chin-ups to be 25% um, percent respectively. So the formula for this, looks like this, we would go score times weight plus score times weight and then dot, dot, dot all the way. As long as these scores, or sorry, these weights all add up to 100, there's no further math needed. So let's create those weights now. So in my, at the top here, I'm just gonna add a row and we'll add some weights and we'll make strength one worth 0.50 0.25 for the second one, 0.25 for the second one. And the key here is that these all add up to one. So to do this formula, we'll go over here and we'll type in equals score times weight plus score, whoops, need the, sorry, I just messed up the formula here. We'll go score times weight, weight, don't forget my brackets, plus score times weight, plus score times weight. Close off all the brackets. I'm going to lock all of these weights in with um, F4 because those are never gonna change where they are when I hit enter. Now you can see all of our scores basically have converted to a weighted score. Okay, and if we were to start to play around with the percentages here, maybe we made this 1.25 and then this 1.5, you can see how that changes the scores. So you can see how if you have some fitness data, just doing a little math on it by converting it to a Z, a Sten, or a T, and then creating some weighted scores of your own, you can start to display this information a lot more easily and it can be easy for your um, athletes to figure out. You would do the same process for your power work or your speed work, and the graphs you would start to produce would look a lot better. So I hope this video helps you out, and if it does, please like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps me out, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.